And welcome back to In the Can. This uh, next film that we're going to be talking about, uh, Fishing Without Nets, it's uh, a film that I got to see the other day and uh, is gorgeously, gorgeously uh, shot and uh, a great story to it. Got a whole, ca everybody's here from the film. Every single member of the <laughs> film is here, just about. Uh, uh, Eddie uh, is, is here. Eddie, I'm uh, ready for Vice as an executive producer. Cutter, of course, you uh, uh, directed. And then uh, our cast members, Abu Bakar, Abdi, and then Sammy is here to help out with some translation. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you for being you, here. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about your involvement with yeah. Vice, uh, first of all, as from the production side, because this isn't one of those typical uh, sweep in, shoot the film, sweep out kind of things. Yeah. I, th I think, uh, you know, so first of all, I, w I was introduced to the short film just maybe 10 days before it premiered here in 2012. Um, and I knew that um, Cutter had uh, the intention of turning this short into a feature film. Um, and we met here at Sundance, and I said, your f short film is brilliant. Let's, you know, Vice is in. Um, it's the, exactly the kind of feature film uh, we want to make. You know, it feels like it could be a Vice documentary, um, and yet it's, you know, a huge step into the direction of narrative and, you know, poetic filmmaking. Like you said, it's like widescreen and beautiful, and we don't tend to do that with our Vice docs. They're beautiful, but they're not, uh, you know, they're not in, in, in beautiful in the same way. Way. So I was hooked immediately, and, and then yeah, we just started producing the film. And it almost has kind of a documentary feel at, at first. You know, we have the voiceover, obviously voiceover, and we, we hear a little bit about your background as your character. And for a second there, you almost feel like it, it, you're being sucked into a real life story even though it is a narrative. So how do you combine those two worlds? And, and obviously, as, as, as it plays out, it becomes more of a, a dramatic. But there's that interesting kind of connection between that real life documentary filmmaking and a dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we approach a subject from a research standpoint of saying, OK, I'm going to pretend I'm a journalist or a documentarian. I'm going to know everything about this. And, and I'm going to do all of that to in inform our, our fiction. And I think that uh, knowing that you have all these, all this great material that's real, but then also giving yourself the chance to have, sort of take the license and make it into into fiction, is for me a great place to, to be working. And I think for the movie, it's a it's a it's a really it, it, it works to help have uh, give the film a you know make it feel authentic. Mm -hmm. and, and I love kind of that juxtaposition between the beauty of the place and the absolute, absolute horrible things that are happening in that place, you know. Uh, let's talk about your cast a little bit, because, you know, I know that a lot of you, this is the first time that you've ever worked on a film. Yeah. Uh, and I know that uh, Abu Bakr, you actually helped cast yeah. a little of this, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, how did that process go with you? How did you find your cast? Because, you know, the performances were, were really quite good. Yeah, I, 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 met, <clears throat> I met Abdi and Abu Bakr making this short in 2010. We started that process. And, and Abu Bakr was also a, um, our, sort of our guide for you know, making sure that places looked like Somalia that we were filming in, or that you know, he, would, he would tell me stories of people that he known who, who you know, were involved in piracy. And he added to, he would come over and give me ideas for scenes all the time. And you filmed in Kenya. We filmed, filmed in off Kenya. Off the coast of Kenya, so it was on the other side of the continent. But, uh, no, no, no. But no, 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 just south, side, no just, it was just south of, just yeah, south, so, so that was a, in the Indian Ocean. That's right. Yeah, they're neighboring countries, and, and there's Somalis living in, in Kenya. But uh, it was through Abu Bakr, who, who helped us also cast, um, that we met Abdi. And Abdi came into the room, did an audition. He walked out, and the, producer, the other producer and I looked at each other and were like, well, there's the star of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what was his audition? What did you make him do? The, the audition really was, was an interview. It was more like to just get a gauge of like, who are you? And we did a, a sort of some fake scenes, but it was mostly just like talking. And he's, he's you know, could run for office with his, yeah. you know, charisma. So, like, we, we, we were, we, we, we then from there developed a, a working relationship that was, you know, one where we learned from each other and, 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 and you know, turned it into a feature film together. So, so let's talk from your perspective, Abdi, as, as you kind of took what you did in a short film and you made it into a bigger, bigger narrative. Did you take a different approach? Was it a little harder for you? What was your experience? شغلة مياد بدها شيء إلا فيلم كيريت إلا كيوين. شغلة. هسا ده أكتر فوات هاي. 
boqolkii boqol kwanza oo ku maasantay soo ashan inay weydiisid waana sugay inay weydiin doontid ee waxaan ogsoonahay shaqadan filinka aan dhiga fishman without net anigana malay dabataanahay marka ee shaqada kala masuubin ilaa shaqadan ka ee waxaan ogsoonahay inaan shaqadan tiirist aniga ma mid weyn inaan dhiga doono he says thank you for the question <laughs> and basically uh, it wasn't there wasn't much of a difference between the first and the second movie I mean this is his first uh, just acting alone and he's a fisherman and so he was close to the role and that was like one of the things that was really assistive to it and, and, and your character is very interesting too because uh, you know without going too much into the plot I don't want to ruin anything mm -hmm. for anybody but you play a fisherman mm -hmm. who through a series of events is kind of forced into piracy uh, you need to take care of your family, and you find that that's the only way out. Uh, and there's some interesting scenes with you and a prisoner that is taken where we realize that perhaps you, your character, is the real prisoner here. Is that, is, what kind of, you know, what was your mindset with that? The, 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 those are some of my favorite scenes in the movies, the two prisoners as, in your interaction. <laughs> Um, Bokal ki bokal run wana kuma santa su asha na iwe di wana suga i malawat. And Bokal ki bokal murki an kujira gop ta hapsi gali herai. And film wahaji to o ladigo o sidi runta o kala. Like in the film kan film o me ajusal lehe why because runta bokal ki bokal wahan kudigi anigo o kartidi yedi iyo awudi da antisai an oina yo an me shakalna. Iga fura, iga fura an daha yo. Marka bokal ki bokal kof ki dawadu han oga kof kan wili gis oina inu oina. Uh, he said that he really uh, tried to make sure that he brings some sort of reality and tries to absorb what was going on. And he went into another scene in which he was talking about where he was trapped again. And then so basically what it is is that he really just is a method actor and just like wants to <laughs> like absorbs himself and stays into that until he goes home. And the, the, the scene that he's talking about, when he, when he shot it, there was there was the behind the scenes videographer couldn't see what was going on, could only hear, and she burst into tears. And when he came out after shooting the scene, he walked away from everyone. I, you know, I tried to say he just went right past all of us, and he went over and 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 you could just see he was like letting letting it out because it wasn't acting. He was he was living that, and and I think for other people on the crew who've seen and worked with with you know professional actors they were sort of astonished to see that coming from a guy who's just doing this pure and, and raw and with, with but, that, but that's really the essence of acting is that fearlessness right yeah to be, mm -hmm. to be able to draw from within you the emotion that you need to tap into to do a scene and not be afraid to show it and certainly not be afraid to expunge it after the scene is over yeah i mean the scene where he's trapped in the hold um when i saw the rough cut the first rough cut of the film, it all translated because that shot of the ship from above when all that, well, I'm not going to ruin the whole film, but um, when he's screaming, I mean, that really like just got me and I was like, holy, this yeah. is, not only is the acting superb here, but this is the metaphor for the film. This character is trapped, you know, in his life and now like, you know, literally trapped. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to talk to uh, Abu Bakar a little bit too because you play the, the chairman. Hmm. kind of the kingpin boss, but it's not an evil it's good character yeah. so much as is, is that, the, and again, we don't want to give anything away, but at the end you become, you know, we, we, we start rooting for you a little bit. Tell us about your character. Tell us about your approach to your character. Mr. Goody. Mr. Goody. Mr. Goody. I'm a Siddash Qaistan. I'm a businessman. 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 I'm and so basically when he was first approached the, about the film um, he knew that Qatar was very young, but he was very bright. And so he thought that he would assist him any way he could. And so when it came to the role, like it, it, uh, it morphed into something where he would not be that type of person that devalues life. That's what happens when you bring humans to characters, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's take a real quick look. We've got a clip here. Uh, it kind of sets up things nicely, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that. This is Fishing Without Nets. 
Kaming jirahay Happy Higa Batuhali Bila na masula ba niyo? So there you have it. It's in, and you know, basically, your character Abdi walking like that is a, is another great metaphor uh, <laughs> for you. your journey, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, from start to finish. Let's talk about the actual filming. Uh, you know, with with a, with a pretty large cast, you had a lot of extras, right? You wanted to make it as authentic as possible. Did you have to create sets, or did you basically just find places that made sense? And of course, Abu, you, you helped, you know, make sure that it was looked like some of the Somalian camps that, mm. that we were talking about. Yeah, we, we okay. So the the, the production is is a, it's logistically it's a completely crazy challenge because everything is working against you making a film uh, in 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 Africa. Um, but what is working totally in our favor is is that the place you know we we can shoot most of our locations just as they were. We we built some sets. Um, just as a way of keeping control, but we would, you know, source all of the materials from like over there, you know, and, and bring it right over. And Forty so, feet. Over yeah. From. So it's it's you know when when we say we built sets, we we absolutely did, but there were, you know, it, it was drawing from real materials. The raw materials the were there already. It was just basically putting me in the right place for the best shot. Yeah, but but m much of the film, including obviously our, uh, you know, scenes on on our oil tanker, are you know in actual locations. Um, and and that was that was definitely. But but one one thing we would do is is Abu Bakr would say, you know, Hobio and Basaso are like places in Somalia where uh, where pirates you know sort of have a haven, and he would he would help us find places because he's he's been there and is from Somalia and would say this is this looks like. Hobio, no, that doesn't, you know, or this, and so we. And we, I know very well Hobio and Bosa, so and Harare. Yeah, yeah. I know very well. Yeah, and and I I leaned on him tremendously uh, for that, and could not have done it without without him. Well, it sounds like an excellent collaboration between a lot of people who really wanted to tell an amazing story, and I think it's the perfect film for Sundance. The film is called Fishing Without Nets. It'll be playing throughout the week. Uh, you've already had your premiere to great uh, great acclaim, and hopefully this uh, film will have a long life after Sundance as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank thank you. you very much for coming. <laughs> thank you. And we'll be back with more in the can after this. Stay tuned.